So just given the quick turnaround with New England this weekend, how does that uh, change your preparation for the team? Uh, just, you know, I mean, obviously today was a regen day for the guys who played and training a little bit with the other guys tomorrow is a, is a travel day. You know, it's a full, full travel day when we go back there and then we'll train again on Saturday and get ready to play on Sunday. So, you know, not much we can do uh, except make sure that the guys get some rest and get some recovery. What sticks out to you about the New England team? Uh, you know, they're obviously a team that started a little slowly, but they're on a good run lately. And, uh, you know, they're a team that plays with a lot of midfield options, packed midfield, really only one forward up top. And, uh, you know, Lee Wynn's been having a very good year for them. He's been probably their most dangerous player game in and game out. But, you you know, always it seems that Fagunda seems to always have a good game against us. So we got to make sure that we're aware of him. And, uh, you know, the, the rookie Mullins had a, had a great goal in their last appearance. You had said that this game worried you more as far as the fatigue factor. How do you manage the players and their, their legs with this? Well, we'll see how they are. You know, we'll see how they are. We do a, we do a number of things, you know, uh, the Omega Wave and different things, so it gives us an idea where the players are at. Uh, you know, they're always worse 48 hours after a game, and, uh, you know, it's a good thing we're not playing on Saturday. You know, getting the extra day helps, so we're playing on Sunday. And, uh, you know, we'll see. We'll check in with guys. We'll see how they feel. We'll see how guys look on Saturday. And then we'll make our decisions for Sunday. Are you still pretty confident that Leo will be ready? Uh, yeah, yeah, Leo's going on the trip. You know, we're taking Leo along, and that's why we had him on the bench yesterday. We felt he could come off the bench. We didn't think he he could probably go beyond, uh, you know, much beyond 45 uh, at that point uh, without maybe putting in danger of re-injury. So we wanted to save that, that we didn't have to play him as good, you know, so we think if, if uh, he needs to start on, uh, on Sunday, you know, he should be able to go close to 90. And how's Dylan looking? Uh, is progressing much faster than they expected, you know, but Dylan, uh, just like last year when he had his hamstring, he recovered, I think, a, a week to 10 days quicker than they expected as well. Uh, so he's probably on a faster track. I mean, in his mind, uh, he feels he could be ready by next weekend. World Cup training camp invites are going to be probably sent out this weekend. I guess having potentially three guys go into camp is a good thing. Yeah, no, it's always a good thing. You know, I mean, the opportunity to play in a World Cup is something that players dream about. Uh, you know, it's something that uh, is, uh, you know, for some it's more than a once in a lifetime experience, but uh, for some it is a, is a once in a lifetime experience and it's something you never want to deny a player. And, and so for them to be able to participate and take advantage of that opportunity and make the World Cup team is something that we as a club are proud of, that I am a, as a coach is proud of. And I think that the players, all the players on our team are most supportive of them. What are your memories from the World Cup when you were there? Uh, it's just, uh, you know, it's just a special, it's an event you can't describe. I mean, it's bigger, it's bigger than a Super Bowl. You know, no offense to our football fans and, and the Seahawks are, are great Super Bowl champions and the Super Bowl is a massive event, but, but the World Cup is just something different, bringing together all those different cultures and, and the world, you know, and uh, just the magnitude of the event is, is it's just so, so more, f or more far reaching than you ever thought of it. And then when you're in the middle of it, you see that you you feel like, you know, a fish in a fishbowl, as the old expression is, and, and, and you just feel constantly that every decision you're making is going to affect the outcome of that next game, whether it's at training, whether it's where you stay, uh, what your preparation is, the time of your flights. I mean, everything is monitored down to a detail and everything is treated in a, in a first-class basis. You know, there's, uh, there's no... Uh, there's no cutting corners on anything, and, and that's something that's unique about it. But then the biggest thing you remember is just the level of competition. You know, you're out there and you're saying, hey, hey, these, for the most part, are the best players in the world. Sometimes there's a guy or two that doesn't make it because his country doesn't qualify. But uh, it's just, uh, you know, when you look at the uh, personnel that's there, it's just fantastic. Is there anything that specifically stands out from, from 90, I guess, and, and that you maybe from 94, I mean, 94, I mean yeah. yeah. Uh, you know, it was a little different because it was in the United States, you know, I mean, certainly our game with Brazil on, uh, you know, on July 4th was something that you'll always remember and, and we lost one nothing in that game. But, uh, you know, just the uh, just the magnitude of the event, it being on July 4th, it being, uh, you know, around the 16 game, all of those things, uh, you know, then the win against Colombia was 
was fantastic because that's what put us through and and shocked the world because a lot of people had Colombia as one of the World Cup favorites that year. Uh, but I thought our game plan was absolutely fantastic. So, so certainly the competition on the field is always what you're going to remember the most. How did that experience shape you as a coach? I, I mean, you learned an awful lot. I mean, you learned uh, you know learned a lot from working with Bora. Uh, as the head coach, you learned a lot from the uh, preparation and the experiences going in. You know, I wish at some point I had had the opportunity to take some of the lessons that I learned there and apply them again. Uh, I was able to apply some of them uh, at the Youth World Cup level with the youth teams. Uh, but uh, it's, uh, uh, you know, it, it, all, it all becomes part and parcel what you're doing. You, you know, the, one of the biggest things you learn as a young coach, you you know, everything's a big moment, everything's big drama points, and you sort of learn uh, through those experiences to, uh, okay, you know, this is and something important to deal with, and this is something that's maybe less important, and you learn how to separate out between, uh, between key moments and not so key moments, uh, what you need to sort of focus on, what you, not, what you don't need to focus on, and uh, maybe you have selective amnesia at the appropriate moment uh, because you got to move on to a bigger moment. How would you describe the kind of career arc you've seen from Brad Evans? It seems like in pro soccer and pro sports, you think you have someone figured out by 25, 26. But it seems like he's even reaching heights. He didn't think he might at 29 right now. Hey, you know, I think Brad is Brad is a unique guy. I mean, uh, he's uh, uh, he's not everybody's cup of tea. You know, people look at him as a player, and he's not a player that everybody instantaneously says, oh, that guy's a good player. But I know the first time I saw Brad as a player when he trialed with the under-20 team, uh, I thought there was something there. Uh, and uh, uh, it, I continue to see that. That was one of the reasons that, you know, I had him in Columbus and, and one of the reasons I was happy when he was here in Seattle as well. But he, he has the ability, just like that left back the other day, to uh, wherever you put him on the field to, to tactically get the position right to like 80 to 90 percent of it you know we even though he hasn't played a game at that position before he gets the tactics of the position very quickly and he gets most of it right and then with more time then obviously those tactics improve and so forth but he's continued to improve on his game his passing decisions have become better and better as he's as he's grown over the years uh, his ability to possess the ball has become better uh, he hasn't lost his uh, his work rate hasn't lost his ability to get forward at key moments and be goal dangerous, whether it's from an outside back spot or whether it's from a central midfield spot. How much pride have you taken in his run as someone that's kind of been his coach for a long time now? You know, the pride is, is his to have. You know, he's got to be proud of himself because he's put in the work. You know, he's, he's the one who's dedicated himself to his craft. And, you know, you know, my job as a coach has just been to help him get an environment that he can continue to grow and to let him know that I think he has talent and he has ability and, and he needs to continue to use that. But uh, um, obviously, as a coach, you're always proud when players uh, continue to go on. And as an organization right now, we're proud that, you know, we could have three guys, you know, named to the to the squad of 30, you know, so, you know, that's my mass right, that's 10 percent. And, uh, you know, so that's uh, that's a good number. How do you other guys, but uh, a guy like like Zach Scott, just the, the level of professionalism, I guess, that it takes to not get the call, not get the call, not to get the call and then get it and and have a good game. I get last night. Yeah, I mean, you know, Zach is, you know, right now, Zach's probably Mr. Sounder, you know, is the best way to describe him. He's maybe taking that mantle off, off of Roger Levesque since Roger retired. And, you know, but Zach is, you know, he's a good pro. He works really hard and and uh, he's he I knew he was going to be prepared. And, uh, you know, I, I thought there were some ups and downs a little bit in training for him this year. But uh, I, I always had confidence that Zach would be ready to play. And we thought last night was a a good uh, a good matchup for him, a good uh, situation for us to bring him in. And I thought he responded and played very well. How do you think Brad's time at left back these last couple games are helping him prepare and his chances for the World Cup camp? Well, I think it just opens up another vista for for Jurgen to look at that, yeah, he can play on the left side as well. You know, I mean, I, when you think of him, although I don't think he excessively used his left foot uh, on the left, but he, he played the ball down the line and, 
Uh, even uh, he was on that part of the field and he didn't close himself off to that part of the field which is sometimes what happens when somebody's overly right footed playing on the left and so I just think it showed again that you know he can play there in a pinch if need be as well and you know he got matched up uh, at times especially when Castillo came on you know, got matched up with some fast quick guys uh, which is what he's going to face in the World Cup so it, it's good practice for him. You think back on 2012 there was a game that against Portland uh, he you pulled Brad at halftime. The next game was against San Jose in the Open Cup, where he, I think, played his first time for right at right back for you. Uh, do you, I mean, do you remember that as maybe a potential turning point in, in where he, you know, I don't know, in his career, kind of turned around a little bit? Uh, I don't know. Sometimes I have these uh, outbursts and I get mad at people and pull them at halftime or whatever. But uh, you know, for him, I mean. Uh, Brad, as early as when he was with me with the under 20s, I, I, play, I played him at center back with the under 20s. So uh, the versatility of playing him in the back or playing somewhere outside of central midfield uh, has always been something that uh, you know I've seen in him, and is something that you know I asked him to do you know already when he was when he was 19, 20 years old. So so that to me was nothing new. So him being able to play right back is. Uh, you know, in that particular game, it wasn't like, like a big revelation per se. It was just, okay, that's where we need him in this one. That's where he can play for us here. Uh, you know, and it, it helped him as he moved forward into his national team career. Uh, you know, in the same way, I think he was really put it right back more out of necessity than out of, okay, this guy could be a great right back. And when he gets put there, he took care of business and did well. And uh, the rest is, uh, you know, moving forward for him now. It seemed like there was a time where he didn't want to play anywhere else besides center mid. Do you, do you remember that time? Was that a difficult time, maybe trying to open his mind to other possibilities? No, no, not really. I don't think it was ever a situation of Brad uh, having a difficult time playing anywhere else. I think what was when you're a player that's versatile and, the, the you know, I had one other player who was similar to Brad like that but when you play a player and you play him in different positions what happens the player sort of says you know can you you know what do you think is my best position and we focus on one thing so i can really learn how to do this and so it's more out of uh you know i want to play really well so i want to sort of learn that one position if that's where you want me to play all the time and uh you know i think there were more discussions along those lines than well i don't want to play here or i don't want to play there it's like i'll play there but then let me play there and I'll learn that position. Or I'll play here and then let me play there and I'll learn that position. And unfortunately, as I said to Brad, I said, well, there's times where I see you here and there's times where I see you there. So, so sometimes you need those guys.